Uh, welcome to our conversation today. We've got Paul Sparks uh, and Paul Cameron. This is the Paul and Paul Show, but we also have Scott McGean. Uh, and um, today I'd like to, um, in this conversation, I'd like to just uh, throw the uh, the idea of connecting across or connecting parish stories. Um, what sort of things have um, been important for you, Paul, in, in those kind of building of connections? I think I think that we are living in a very profound time when it comes to this word of collaboration and connection across places. This is a very new time. Uh, it's new in the idea that the diversity of the nations uh, are often embedded in our parishes. We have more connectivity than we have ever had in the history of the world in terms of uh, the technologies and, and mobility to connect. And in, in addition to that, we also have, probably for the first time in many places in the world, we have the multitude of, of faith expressions in one parish, whereas prior prior. Uh, times you'd only have one viewpoint uh, expressed in a particular neighborhood or parish. And so these factors of diversity and connectivity and multiplicity of, of traditions and so forth create an environment that is complex, it's relational, uh, it, it cannot be solved like a 10-step uh, puzzle. You can't, uh, you know, you can't uh, give somebody, here's the 10, step, ten steps to to flourishing church life in the neighborhood uh, because every context is so loaded with uh, complexity. And so, you know, back in the, in the last century, it might have been easy to say, uh, here's, here's the seven steps to this or here's the ten steps to that. But now we're in a season, we're in a time where I think the church is awakening to the fact that we absolutely have to be connecting uh, with one another across places and sharing stories about our risks, about uh, how we have experimented and and drawing from the best practices and saying, does this have any resonance in the place that we live, you know? So in, in my context, in the U.S., it's just been fascinating with, with Parish Collective and other uh, organizations that are really looking to take expressions of church that are really deeply planted in the neighborhood and say how can how can you get outside the insularity of your place and start to share with one another learn from one another so we encourage uh, creating uh, uh, environments that, that are just spaces for sharing stories uh, events where you can talk about uh, uh, what's what seems to be uh, happening what's percolating how is God on the move what are the struggles what are the concerns and also using technologies, uh, online uh, technologies, uh, to create easy ways to learn, even across countries, as it were. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is why we're here. Uh, what I hear you describing is interdependence, which seems to me to be uh, something of a, of a biblical practice, and it stands in the face of independence. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's really a significant thing to say, we don't have the code, the answer, uh, and we need one another. We need each of us discerning, uh, each of us sharing our journeys, our experiences, our experiments. Uh, what a profound and much more adaptive uh, form of learning than kind of here's the technical fix. That's great. Uh, so, Paul, around that, that storytelling, uh, how do we techniques, tools, or just ways in which we, we do the storytelling in an honest way where we're not just idolizing success and falling back to that model, but but how do we actually yeah. tell all sorts of stories? Yeah, I'm really glad you bring it up. Uh, it's such a, such a uh, habit of ours, isn't it, to only highlight uh, the successes, only to highlight the things that others will look at and say, oh, that's, that's amazing. And I think I, I remember having a, an event uh, where we had been telling a series of stories through slides and you, you have 20 seconds and then the slide changes and you tell uh, about the journey through a series of slides like that and we'd had you know half a dozen of these uh, from you know we had no idea what we we're doing to incredible success and the MC of this event came up afterwards and says to us with tears in his eyes he says if I was to be honest and share my story 
that slideshow would have been in the reverse. And there was a profound resonance across the audience as, as, as participants who sit in the middle of struggle and oftentimes disappointing realities uh, bore witness to it. And I think that story encouraged and inspired and gave them the willingness to say, look, if others are going through this you know, suffering and this challenge, I can as well. And then I think there's the on the other side of that coin is that we have to tell we have to find spaces to tell the stories in process uh, instead of uh, wrapping them up with a neat bow. I think we have to e- even if we are experiencing some flourishing and some success and such, we have to tell the story as in process. Here's where we're sitting now. Here's what's happening at this time, and uh, that's going to be much more collaborative anyway. You know. The, the use of, you mentioned the parish collective before, and I know here uh, in Australia we're uh, just beginning to form the neighbourhood collective. What's the value in, in affirming what you've just been talking about? What's the value of, of that kind of model of communication? You know, historically, what we did was we, we created a lifestyle. We created systems and structures that could escape two things. One, the deep planted incarnational expressions in the neighborhood where you are really truly known and really truly share life together. And secondly, we escaped the meaningful, on the journey links with people and churches and leaders from other contexts where you are really sharing about the struggles of what's happening uh, on the ground together. We escaped both of those patterns. I think networks uh, much like even even the uh, churches of Christ, the the regional clusters and such that you're developing, and the neighborhood collective and so forth, these are spaces where you're fostering both of those type of links. You're saying, let's uh, let's support one another in our deep embedded, uh, planted expressions, uh, but let's connect in real, uh, authentic, and vulnerable ways across our places as well. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, as we, you mentioned the, the uh, regional clusters, but how does that work across um, other movements, denominations, different frameworks, theologies? How would you sort of, any comments on, on sort of networking across that way? I think perhaps one of the most fascinating and exciting things about uh, this uh, kind of movement that's happening is the capacity to learn from diverse stories. So traditions that are different are experiencing their path to deeper embeddedness and engagement uh, on the ground in different ways. And it is high time, and I think we all know this and we're all beginning to learn this, that we see the diversity of of expressions and traditions as a gift that will help us uh, live better into our own tradition as well as uh, uh, form a bit of a team. Uh, you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have partners who envision the work a bit differently uh, and, and to find ways to fit together instead of competing. Uh, I think this is the future. That's great. I think, um, whether you add in comment, but, but my experience has been that as we do that as well, it actually helps balance what we do that, that are so easy for our models, our frameworks to sort of be on a particular bit and, and hearing those other voices and conversations actually adds value, adds strength and actually refines our own practice in, a, in some helpful ways. So. And, it, and it really celebrates experimentation mm. and, yeah, and yeah. The, the thinking yeah. outside of, of the, the what might have been the way we've always done it around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing breaks you out of the way we've always done it than the collaboration with different partners. Listening to other honest stories, yeah, and the authenticity of the the choices and the decisions, sometimes very hard decisions yeah. that are being made. Yes, um, as uh, as groups of people begin to connect with their neighbourhood. Mm-hmm. Well, we're up. Uh, time's up again, um, so I think it's a good time to wrap. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Scott, uh, in the Paul and Paul show. Um, uh, <laughs> Thanks, we're Scott. done. Thank you very much.